This video is brought to us by Babbel. More on them at the end of the video. I'm sharing five bad habits that age you and how to fix them in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. So on this channel, we like to explore the fine art of living, how to live an elegant lifestyle. I also explore this through my books, the Madame Chic series and Connoisseur Kids. And today we're going to talk about aging. Now, obviously everybody ages, but we have bad habits that can accelerate our aging. And I believe it is possible to reverse that aging process so that you actually look and feel younger than you have in the past. Now I'm in my early 40s, when I'm shooting this, I'm 42 years old, and I truly believe that I look younger now than I did when I was in my 30s, because in my 30s, I was doing many of these bad habits. That's how I was able to get the content for this <laughs> video. Let's jump right into bad habit number one, which is succumbing to stress. Stress. If you use this emoji more often than not when you are texting your friends, you know that you are too stressed. Now, stress is something that we all deal with on a micro level as well as a macro level. Stress can rule our modern lives and it's actually pretty destructive. So I have some notes here and this article is from MU Healthcare and it says research has found the hormones produced with chronic stress can age our brain and immune systems. Those who are constantly stressed have higher instances of dementia and memory loss as well as more damaged cells within their immune systems. Stress also lends itself to high blood pressure, making you more susceptible to heart disease and other conditions typically found in older populations. So as if we needed something else to be stressed about, stress ages us rapidly. So we need to find ways to manage our stress. I have a wonderful book recommendation for you. It's written by my friend, Dr. Chloe Carmichael, and it's called Nervous Energy, Harness the Power of Your Anxiety. So if you are someone who suffers from stress a lot and you have negative anxious feelings, this is a wonderful book to read. And Dr. Chloe gives many amazing examples on how you can learn to harness that energy into something more positive. So I have five things here that I like to do when I'm stressed, and this helps me combat the stress in my life and put things into perspective. So the first thing is breathing techniques, okay? Dr. Chloe talks about this a lot in her book, but I find that when I'm stressed, I'm engaging in shallow breathing. I'm not breathing deeply, oxygen is not getting to my organs, and I do this all day long. I will go for hours and suddenly realize that I have not had a full deep breath. So I become very conscious of my breath, that's one thing. Um, I like to repeat affirmative phrases, and I've mentioned this in many videos on how to remain unbothered. Repeating these phrases will help sink into your subconscious mind. So I say things like the motto of the channel, which is keep calm and remain classy. I like to say that to myself. One of my favorite ones is none of these things move me. That's from Acts 2024. 20, when things are going really badly and I feel extremely stressed, I just pause, I take a deep breath, and I say, none of these things move me until I really truly feel that they don't. Another one I like to say is, my ships come in over a calm sea, and that helps me to calm down as well. Another way I deal with stress is taking a break and going outside in nature. This always helps. Just change your atmosphere. I go outside and I instantly look for butterflies or birds or caterpillars or <laughs> anything, dragonflies, and that immediately calms my stress levels. The fourth thing I do when I'm feeling stress is I try to laugh. So sometimes I'll find some of my favorite comedians on YouTube and I'll watch one of their videos. I love Trey Kennedy's videos. They make me laugh. Um, I like John Crist. Um, who else? Charlie Barron's. There's a bunch of comedians that I like watching on YouTube that make me laugh. Or I'll just talk to a friend and we can laugh together. And the most important thing I do when I'm trying to combat stress is realizing that God is in control. He always has been and always will be. And that he works literally everything out for good in my life. So I don't need to stress about it. So those are the things that help me combat my stress. 
And I've come such a long way now where I'm able to deal with my stress better than in my 30s when I let my stress completely run my life. <laughs> it was not good. So combat your stress to help you stay young. The second bad habit that ages you is constantly eating all day long. So if you watch my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting and I've done it for over two years now, coming up to two and a half years. And I believe that this has been the single factor that has allowed me to feel and look younger than I did when I was in my 30s. So the bad habit here is constantly eating. And you may not think that you have a problem with eating all day long. I didn't really think I had a problem. In fact, I have a chapter in Lessons from Madame Chic called Snacking is So Not Chic, right? So I'm not like a major snacker, but I realized that I was never really giving myself a break with digestion, that I would eat as soon as I woke up and then, you know, I would have lunch and maybe a conscious snack in between, but I was basically eating a lot. I'd have dinner and then after dinner, I would stay up really late at night and work and have a snack before bed. So all day long, my body was putting energy into digestion. Now I do the 16-8 method. I have a rather early dinner and I don't eat after dinner, nothing. I just have water or herbal tea and then I have breakfast at around nine in the morning. This gives my body a break. Like it's not constantly digesting. It's not digesting when I'm trying to sleep. I am feeling the best I have ever felt in my entire life. And I think I look better now as well than I did when I was slightly overweight and stressed and eating constantly. But don't just take my word for it. I have an article down below from BioAge Health and it talks about how both calorie restriction and time restricted eating can aid in the anti-aging process. So here's the impact of intermittent fasting on your body. You have cellular repair. Your cells remove more waste that would cause cellular damage. Gene expression, okay? So changes occur in genes that promote longevity and prevent disease. Hormonal changes, drop in insulin levels, prevent diabetes and may boost longevity. And intermittent fasting fights inflammation, which helps to aid in your appearance. And finally, it protects against oxidative stress. So it prevents cell damage due to unstable molecules called free radicals. It also helps you lose weight, which helps you look better as well. So I do think that that was the pivotal thing for me. When I started to feel better, um, through fasting, I think I started to look better and feel younger as well. I do recommend to everybody, if you are interested in intermittent fasting, to discuss it with your doctor first. I'm not giving advice here, I'm just sharing my own personal experience. The third bad habit that can age you is continuing with an outdated style. Now the anecdote to this is the 10 item capsule wardrobe, which I like to share here on my channel. And many women and men here do different versions of it. You don't have to do the full version that I do, but you can start to take some of the concepts from the 10 item capsule wardrobe and incorporate them into your life. Now I have to be careful when I say outdated style because I'm not trying to tell us all to dress the same way. And I am one to talk because I like to dress like Emily Dickinson, right? <laughs> so I definitely have an old fashioned sense of style. I'm not talking about your specific style, but what I am saying is that maybe you could look at how you present yourself and ask yourself, is there anything that you can modernize? Can you do a twist on a favorite style that you have that you've worn for the past maybe 30 years? If you're still wearing the hairstyle that you wore in the 80s, for example, could you change it and update it? Go see your hairstylist and say, I'd like to do something different this time. Or if you're using makeup trends that you used in the early 90s, for example, and maybe you feel that things have changed a little bit since then, you could watch makeup tutorials on YouTube and experiment. I'm not saying throw away your style and go with something trendy, but I am saying it's always good to analyze how we look and to just make slight tweaks. 
to it to modernize it. So I love um, Victorian dressing and I like to make tweaks to it to modernize it and make it more modern and more fresh. And I do believe that when you truly express your true style, that when you put thought behind it and no matter what it is, that you look and feel more youthful. You're just going to look good. Why? Because it's your authentic self. You are expressing yourself in a true sense. Now, some people aren't even at that point where they're expressing their style. Some people are still stuck in the rut of wearing yoga pants every day or sweatpants every day. For those women, I just highly encourage you to just step out of that comfort zone if you want to and start dressing like you want to every day with your true style expressing yourself. You'll be amazed at how good you look and feel. The fourth bad habit that ages you is a lack of sleep. Okay, so this was one of the main things in my 30s that really contributed to me feeling and looking run down and older than I was. And that was a lack of sleep. In my 30s, I had my children and I also was really working on my career. So I would stay up till like 11 p.m. or midnight working then I'd go to sleep and a baby would wake me up with the children when they were babies or one of the toddlers would come into the room and I had no sleep. I mean, I just went on interrupted sleep for that entire decade and it really frazzled me out. I looked stressed. I did not feel good. Of course, the solution is to get more sleep. Now, when you have small children and a baby who's waking you up or, you know, toddlers getting into your bed, it's hard to get past that obviously, but you can do everything that you can do in order to not have that happen. So for me, I really, looking back, should have gotten more help. I did everything myself like during that decade and I should not have been staying up till 11 or 12 p.m. I was very honest about that journey on my channel because that is what I did. That is how I built my platform was doing that. But it was at the detriment to my health. So sleep is really important for not only keeping you healthy, but for aging purposes as well, if you wanna slow down the aging cycle. So I have an article from Healthline that I will link down below, and it says poor sleep can affect physical, mental, and cognitive health. So during sleep, we cycle through rapid eye movement and non-rapid eye movement, stages N1, N2, and N3. And the doctors say these processes and the stages of sleep are essential to help us restore, recover from illness, repair our body, consolidate our memories, and regulate our emotions, just to name a few. So sleep really is important. And yes, when you're young, you could probably get away with going without sleep like I did, but it does catch up with you eventually. The article does uh, recommend tips on how to get better sleep, which is to avoid daytime napping, keeping a regular schedule, avoiding screens before bed. I like to keep my room totally dark, okay? And I also like to use a sound machine. That's something that I've always uh, liked to use to get sleep. So now I am taking my sleep very seriously. I try to get into bed by 10 o'clock and try to go to sleep by 10. So that to me is a big deal because this is the first time in my adult life that I've been really focused about getting to bed earlier and I'm getting more sleep as a result of it. The fifth bad habit that ages you is lack of mental stimulation. So the solution to this, of course, is to remain mentally active. This is so important. I am a major proponent of lifelong learning. Just because you graduate from school does not mean that you never have to learn again. I am constantly reading books, listening to audiobooks. I keep a self-improvement journal where I'm learning things and writing them down. I love continuing my arts education and that's why we have the Chic Assignment, which has a new name by the way, it's called Seek Out the Arts Now, on the channel. And we do one video a month where we deep dive into the world's most famous paintings. We read poetry and we listen to classical music. It's so important to keep your mind sharp. I have an article here from US News that says, remaining mentally active is probably key to reducing that trajectory of daily activity decline, even with healthy aging. So even if you're doing everything else right, but you're not exercising your brain, that's going to contribute to a decline. 
Harvard.edu says scientists have found that brainy activities stimulate new connections between nerve cells and may even help the brain generate new cells, developing neurological plasticity and building up a functional reserve that provides a hedge against future cell loss. It's almost like insurance for your future brain, right? So they say at Harvard, any mentally stimulating activity should help to build up your brain. Read, take courses, try mental gymnastics such as word puzzles or math problems, experiment with things that require manual dexterity as well as mental effort such as drawing, painting, and other crafts. So I can't emphasize this enough. It's the component that you don't really find in self-improvement videos here on YouTube. You'll find lots of uh, tips on how to be an elegant lady or gentleman, but they don't really go into the education department of bettering yourself, of becoming a lifelong learner, of studying the arts. And this is one of the most important things that you could do for yourself. I'm going to share the sponsor now for today's video, which is Babbel. Babbel goes perfectly with the final tip, which is to keep mentally active, because what better way to do that than to learn a new language? No matter how old you are, you can do it with Babbel. So Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world, and it teaches real world practical conversations like for travel, business, and relationships. They have short 10 minute interactive lessons. Lessons are designed by real language teachers. There's no machine learning algorithms or AI. They have an award-winning scientific technology that is proven to get you speaking in just three weeks. Here's an example of me brushing up on my French skills with Babbel. Il lui envoie des lettres mystérieuses. Il lui envoie des lettres mystérieuses. So you can get 60% off your subscription with my link, or you can scan the QR code on the screen here. Thank you so much to Babbel for bringing us today's video. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Do you relate to any of the bad habits that I shared on this video? How do you plan to counteract them? I believe that you can look and feel younger than you ever have in your entire life right now when you act on these bad habits and when you become conscious about them. And it gives you a little spring in your step, really, and you start to look and feel better. I know that from personal experience. I have more bad habits that I really need to work on, so if you'd like a part two of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, everyone. Keep calm and remain classy, and say none of these things move me. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.